Welcome back to a new part of this EV conversion series of this Volkswagen bus. This video will be part 10. And this is the first one in my newly rebuilt garage, so I'm excited about that. The purpose of this video is we're going to be doing this task right here, finishing the controller coolant system. What does that mean? Well, it means that we're going to be installing a coolant reservoir and lines going down through the cargo deck and into the engine compartment. We'll be mounting a small coolant radiator above our battery in our fresh air box and a coolant pump to pump that fluid into and out of our motor controller. So stay tuned to see how I did it. And as you can see, in previous videos, I've installed the Warp 9 motor controller, which is a liquid cool controller. And now I need to install all the rest of the apparatus to make the cooling loop work for that. Now, you may not have a Warp 9 controller. These are pretty much defunct now. That company that made them are, is no longer, and it's also a DC powered motor controller if you haven't been following my other EV videos. But a lot of AC induction motors and then the newer motor controller setups for EV conversions are also liquid cool. So you may be able to get some ideas off of this video for those as well. This is the diagram that I drew up and I'm, this is one of those videos that I started when I, or well, the work I started before my garage rebuild. And so this is the first video back after the garage rebuild took most of my year. But I'm assuming that the research I did back then to draw this diagram is correct. And I'm gonna trust that uh, the research I did is correct. So I'm, I'm not gonna question it and I'm going to move forward with this as my diagram. So what it shows you is that I have a reservoir. This is just a plastic one. I can always go upgrade to like an aluminum one later. But the reservoir needs to be at the highest point of the circuit here. Let's call it a, a coolant circuit here. It has to be the highest point or it should be at the highest point in order for uh, the pump to be most effective in that you can leverage gravity on the input of the pump to then you know get the fluid out of the reservoir into the pump and then into the controller. From there the most work that the pump has to do, this is the output of the pump, has to be to push the, fl the fluid into the controller, out of the controller, into the radiator, out of the radiator, and then back uphill, and then back into the reservoir. Now to accomplish this, I've got, like I said, the tank, I've got this pump. This pump came with the setup that the previous owner had, so this is used. So then I also have grommets, because what I, what I will be doing is using this half inch tubing. Let me see if that's what it is. It's half inch vinyl tubing, half inch inner diameter vinyl tubing. And I've got uh, just a couple pieces of this. Now notice that it's not the reinforced, it's just the clear regular vinyl tubing. And that's because this isn't going to create a whole lot of pressure. So I don't feel like I need that reinforced mesh uh, tubing. So just regular clear uh, half inch ID tubing, vinyl tubing, tubing cutter, a drill with a step bit and some bits because we're going to be drilling holes and I'll show you why and where that's going to happen. And some like stainless steel hose clamps. I also got some of these elbows just in case I need them to transition hard turns rather without kinking this line. I don't know if I'll need them, but we'll see. And then grommets to transition these lines through sheet metal so that, you know, they can go through the sheet metal, but, the, but it won't, you know, cut them up. Now, one thing you're not seeing is the radiator. So what is that? Well, I already installed that earlier in the year. And you'll notice that the battery is missing. So I took it out. Here is the radiator. Notice that it is installed above the battery, where the battery is. And the reason for that is what I thought I'd do is I'd start out with just leaving it without any active cooling fans on it. You know, in other words, electric cooling fans blowing on it. And I was able to strap it in, like weld some straps into there. I should have done this before I painted the car, but I didn't think of it. So I had to kind of do a little bit of welding on the finished painted car. But a lot of that stuff I just covered up with some generic white spray paint. You can't really see it, but I wish I would have done that a little bit better. 
and you could see that that strap is like screwed in, that front strap is screwed in up there. But anyway, the radiator is up there and I think it's in a good place for passive cooling because then the Volkswagen bus, especially the later 70s models, have this large cooling intake that it used, right? And then that air will be, when I'm driving forward, that air will be forced down over the radiator. So I thought that was a perfect spot to put it and I might be able to get away with never having to actively cool it because while I'm driving, I've got forced air over that radiator by way of the chassis of the bus. So the radiator's already mounted and strapped in as well as I could. So what I plan on doing the reservoir is mounting it here. I looked at several places in the engine compartment and I just couldn't find anything that would work well and have this as the highest point. And also, by the way, have it in a convenient place where I can, you know, check it and refill it, right? I'm thinking if I put it here on the cargo, on the side of the cargo deck, the only issue with that is I, you know, something could hit it, right? But what I could do is eventually put like a little metal shroud around it if, I, if I'm having problems with that. All right, I'm bringing you back in just to show the progress here. I was gonna provide some action shots, but honestly, it was not that interesting. It's basically just drilling holes and shoving grommets in, and that's about it. So for the reservoir, there's where it's gonna be. The way I installed it, obviously, I just used some self-tapping screws, but I leveled it, but I did not level it to the middle of the level. I leveled it with the bus. So because my engine and transmission is missing, the top of the, the rear end is higher than it normally will be. So I put the level on the deck lid and I leveled that with the deck lid. You know what I'm saying? And uh, then just drilled one inch holes and put some 25 millimeter grommets and I cut them to the size of the tubes and ran them through. Again, there's not a lot of advice I can give on just drilling holes and you know, you just, I use a punch to, to mark the center location for the drill bit. I usually drill with some kind of nice sharp titanium bit to get an initial hole in and then you know move maybe move up to a larger one and then to the step bit if it's if it's needed i'll put a little paint on a q-tip and wipe it in there to paint the bare metal after i did it but for these a lot of the i, I think i did that on the top deck just put a little white paint but for the most part if you put some just a generic grease just some general purpose automotive grease Put those around the hole that'll not only help you to push the grommet in but it will also protect the sheet metal from rust now these grommets i bought this kit and it's only they're called rubber grommets but really what they are, are uh, different size plugs and the largest one here is a 25 millimeter which is a one inch hole but what I like about this kit here, even though it's a pain because you have to cut your own center holes out of them, they're much more versatile because, you know, if I wanted a small hole in here for something to run through there or a large hole, I can make the hole myself. And, you know, so I, in other words, I only have to worry about the outer diameter size to get the hole cut in the metal. But for the inner diameter size, I can do whatever I want. Uh, I used mostly this one inch for the for this uh, half inch inner diameter tubing, which I think is probably a three quarter inch outer diameter. So that is a perfect size there. So those one inch holes are in there. And then I also from the top side went and just wired it up just loosely wired for now. So I've got it on a 10 amp circuit right there with the ground. So just those two wires are coming in. Obviously, I'm going to clean that up and resize the fuse to whatever it needs to be. I don't know what it draws, but I'll put my meter on it. Probably I can go down to a five amp fuse on that. Okay, so for the bottom side, this is the most interesting side here. Here's what I've done. The radiator, I did have to use those 90s. I thought I could heat it up and bend it, but it's a little too tight there coming out of the that wall there. So it's hose clamp city there, but I've got the two elbow or the elbows going into, you know, those hoses. So According to my diagram here, it's the that tube from the reservoir goes into one side of the radiator and then the other side goes into the controller. So that's kind of how I did it. The longest tube, I think, is this front side one. It goes all the way through and around. And yeah, it's going to be hard to film in here, but you can see that comes around this side 
and then into the port. The ports, these ports, you can you can move them around. They're on these swiveling uh, fittings. Anyway, it's on that side of the fitting, this side of the fitting here. So it's coming in there and it's clamped onto there. Then on this side, maybe I can get that. I had to, I, all I had to do was unbolt this and get that out of my way and I was able to get it on there. That one goes to this longer, uh, to this fitting here, this adapter fitting that goes from half inch to, I forget what it is, but uh, uh, the smallest diameter radiator hose you can get. And then that goes into the pump. And then the pump, of course, the inlet of the pump goes up to that tube, the, uh, the tube from the, that comes out of the bottom of the reservoir. So for right now, it's, you know, it's loosely wired in like I showed you from the top. It's not clamped in or anything. I'm still working on a clamping arrangement. For testing, I'll put my battery back in and I'm gonna put some coolant into there. Then, uh, I don't know, I've got it wired to the ignition switch. I'll, I'll uh, turn the battery on, flip the ignition switch on and, and see it work. So I'll, I'll bring you back in when I can show you that. Okay, well, I think we're ready to test now. I've got the battery thrown back in and hooked up. I've got the battery turned on. And I also, the motor is still, you know, just kind of loosely sitting there. I've also went ahead and filled it with antifreeze. Now I'm just using, if you have any comments on this, I don't know any better, but I'm just using the standard everyday, just, uh, just regular glycol antifreeze. This is just a, like a 50-50, antifreeze mix just that you buy at the local auto parts store that I had on my shelf. So that's what I'm going to use. I don't think it really matters. I already filled it up about halfway and then I turned the key on. I did hear that the pump started and it started uh, priming itself. So I went ahead and added some more to it once it primed and you can see that it actually is going back up the return line. So I got it that far. That's as much as I've done and that's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key on for you guys to see. And I haven't actually been back here while it was on and checked for leaks. I've, I don't see any major spills, so I don't think there's any leaks, but let's go ahead and turn the key on and see what happens. Okay, I just had to strap in the car to get rid of the door buzzer noise. That's awful. But here you can hear the pump going. It's not too loud. It's, it was louder before, but now that's now there's plenty of fluid in it. So you can see there's fluid going in and out. I don't see any leaks at the radiator yet. <laughs> yeah, like I'm expecting them. And then I see all the tubing's full, and I can see you might be able to see now. I don't know with the with the tubing full of water. You can see the green tubing coming into there. You can't really see it joining in, and then you can see it from there it's hard really hard to see in the camera but uh, yeah that's it I think it's working I'm gonna set you guys down and then really kind of give it in a few minutes and really run my fingers all over it and make sure there's no leaks but so far I don't see any leaks especially on those fittings and it seems to be circulating I feel good about this this is uh, really nice the next step is just to figure out how I'm going to fabricate and, and, and really secure that pump. So I'll figure that out next and I'll bring you back in and hopefully that'll be it for this video. All right, well, I think I'm pretty much wrapped up here. The pump is mounted with basically a galvanized strap around the body of it and I glued in some pieces of rubberized PVC pan liner into it to kind of, you know, soften it. And it's just kind of strapped and, and screwed into the bottom there, you know, that's the sheet metal there. And then I've got a, that one inch clamp that just sort of guides the tube through it and just kind of holds the tube there. It doesn't push, it doesn't clamp on the tube, it just kind of uh, holds the, the tube in place. I've got some corrugated tubing on various parts, like right there where the tubing has to go under or touches any kind of sheet metal areas. I've also back in, in there. There's some corrugated tubing going up and some, some in there too. So I tried to, you know, tie down the tubing anywhere where it's, you know, not going, where, where, when it's going through the grommets, it's, it's held pretty steady, but I, I've, uh, you know, pretty much capped it off there. I think it's in good shape. It's running really good. I also put my meter on it, which I can show you a film of. So 
likely I will reduce that 10 amp fuse to something a little bit smaller, uh, like a three or a five amp. Since this stuff kind of came with a bunch of other stuff that I bought with this EV setup, it, I'm using it, but ultimately I think what needs to happen is, I ultimately probably will change that out to a nicer aluminum reservoir and also create fabricate like a little metal shield to go over it and protect all that. The reason I'm not gonna really change the pump right now is because Yes, I can buy a new pump with a, that comes with a proper bracket. I probably will, will do that. This will get me going for a little while, but I'm going to monitor how well it does and how cool my controller stays. But I'll, I'll go with this for now, but I'm probably going to upgrade that to a better pump, a newer pump. It's also a little bit loud too. So that's basically it. I've got the wiring as well. It kind of loomed in you can't really see it but it's all cleaned up and here it is on this fuse here so like i said all i'm going to do is downgrade the fuse and i should be done with that the, all the wiring and everything for that and it works great i've been testing it um, no problems no leaks and uh, looks like it's circulating the coolant like i would expect it to so i think that wraps up this video for the motor controller coolant system if you guys have any comments or suggestions for me please leave them below but other than that, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.